Just a week ago, the death toll was low. Cases were concentrated in a handful of states, and coronavirus seemed like a faraway problem for much of the country. But now, with more than 20 deaths, hundreds of cases in at least 34 states, efforts to slow the spread of the outbreak are touching just about every aspect of American life. Some schools are temporarily closed in communities that have seen cases, including a handful right here in Massachusetts, where more than 40 people have been infected. Many businesses are encouraging their employees to work from home. Events that draw large crowds are being reconsidered or outright canceled, like South by Southwest in Texas. The marathon and St. Patrick's Day parade? Who knows? Then today, stock markets plummeted as the epidemic sends shockwaves through the global oil industry and raises fears of a recession. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar tried to downplay the economic impact. The market's obviously been uh, very active today. President Trump is leading a whole-of-government response on, with the vice president helping him on the public health issues we're facing with the novel coronavirus. That is his number one concern in terms of the economy. He and his economic team have the tools to keep this economy going strong. But on Twitter this morning, Trump was focused on the money, seemingly making the case for a smaller response to the outbreak. He wrote, so last year, 37,000 Americans died from the common flu. It averages between 27,000 and 70,000 per year. Nothing is shut down. Life and the economy go on. At this moment, there are 546 confirmed cases of coronavirus with 22 deaths. Think about it. Obviously, his own experts have thought about it. This is just the latest in a series of mixed messages from the Trump administration since the start of the outbreak. So as the 2020 campaign carries on in the midst of all of it, is coronavirus proving to be, as the New York Times put it, an enemy Trump can't tweet away? Joining me are Rufus Gifford, former U.S. ambassador to Denmark and former finance director for the Obama re-election campaign ambassador. It's great to see you. Great Jennifer Soar is former chair of the Massachusetts Republican Party, now the founder and president of Conservative Women for a Better Future. Jennifer, it's good to see you, too. As I said a minute ago in the open, uh, giving him the notion that he can shoot anybody on Fifth Avenue and get away with it. Can he mishandle an epidemic like this and get reelected in November? No, he can't. And the biggest problem for Donald Trump is going to be the economy. When Wall Street has to shut down and won't allow any more trading after 11, 12 o'clock on a Monday, um, I would say that that is... Trump better start getting nervous because I think he's totally fine so long as the economy is fine. But if the economy keeps tanking, he's done. So even if it isn't the economy, stupid, to quote Carville or Begala, whoever said that in the 1990s uh, about Clinton, there are other numbers that matter. As these numbers continue to grow, no matter what you say, it's, the facts are pretty much incontrovertible, yeah. no? I, absolutely. Uh, Jim, I, th I think this is really what we've all been worried about for three years with Donald Trump. This is a president who has a very loose relationship with the truth. And it's created what I really think is a public, uh, a, a, a co the confidence in public trust. The public trust right now is at an all-time low, where you have the president of the United States tweeting out what you just said, well, and essentially contradicting his HHS secretary, his Often director. Also on the same stage, uh, by the way. Absolutely, and it's it's it, it, that does, in my mind, create a sense of unease um, and perhaps perhaps a sense of panic at times that you don't have the people uh, that should be in charge of the country in charge. Well, uh, Donald Trump thinks he's the right guy, as you'll hear here. Here's a little bit from Donald Trump's visit to the CDC in Atlanta on Friday. Anybody that needs a test, that's the important thing. And the tests are all perfect. Like the letter was perfect. The transcription was perfect, right? This was not as perfect as that, but pretty good. You know, my uncle is a great person. He was at MIT. He taught at MIT for, I think, like a record number of years. He was a great super genius, Dr. John Trump. I like this stuff. I really get it. People are surprised that I understand it. Every one of these doctors said, how do you know so much about this? Maybe I have a natural ability. Maybe I should have done that instead of running for president. I don't even know what to say. I mean, I, 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 I mean, in all seriousness, is this his uh, usual spin or is he totally clueless? I mean, that's Trump at, at his best, right? Worst, it's, best. It's, I, 
I mean, listen, the tests are perfect. The, you know, he must be a genius because his uncle the taught him MIT. The tests are perfect, and he relates it to his call with President Zelensky. Yeah, right. Who's talking about that anymore? He, he, is, he is completely out of touch. He really needs to let someone else do the talking. Can we do him. a little more Trump, though, for a second? Just one last angle on this. Obviously, he will attempt to do what I, I frankly think he's done masterfully in three years, blame the Democrats and the media for everything. Here's a tweet from this morning. The fake news media and their partner, the Democratic Party, is doing everything within its in semi-considerable power, it used to be greater, to inflame the coronavirus situation far beyond what the facts would warrant. Surgeon General, quote, the risk is low to the average American. Can he pin this on the Democrats with enough of the voters to convince them, well, maybe it is them. And Donald Trump Jr. said they want millions of people to die to stop Trump. Maybe they do. I, I, obviously, I, I obviously take issue with that. I think the incendiary nature of the things that Donald Trump Jr. said are massively irresponsible. That being said, no is the answer. Why? Because you're seeing it impact real communities. Like we're saying that schools are shutting down. Governors, mayors, people are having to make really, really tough choices right now. Ted it's Cruz impacting. made a tough choice. Well, Ted, Ted Cruz, exactly. He's in self-quarantine. These are... This is this is going to impact every single one of our lives. And to have the president of the United States go to Atlanta, go to the CDC and essentially essentially talk about it in a flippant way um, is really insulting. Well, you I know, think. but for this, we're only dealing with half the equation. Is Trump yeah. getting it wrong? And the consensus seems to be yes. The Democrats have to get it right. And let's look at the two of them. While Sanders is talking about free vaccines, free testing, free treatment, he hasn't run anything in 30 years since he ran the city of uh, uh, Burlington. It is true that Biden, who was your guy, did manage things like the $800 billion in the Recovery Act and that sort of thing. But they have to be careful also, it seems to me, to not overly politicize this at the same time that they're criticizing the president's handling, which seems to me to be a very fine line to traverse. No? I, I actually couldn't agree more. I think you can simply cannot politicize this issue. Uh, look, I'm a Biden guy. I will say that. I have been for quite a long time. Um, there was a poll that came out today that showed that, that Joe Biden was head and shoulders above any other potential president um, in 2020 uh, as it relates to someone you'd look to in a crisis. Against Sanders or this Trump? Was, this was against Sanders and, and the same poll against Trump. Trump. And uh, I think that his experience speaks to that. I mean, the fact of the matter is Joe Biden, one of the reasons why people are electing, voting for Joe Biden right now is they see him as a steady hand. And I think that his experience speaks to that. Do you buy that? We should say, for those who aren't clear with your head, while you are the former chair of the Republican Party, you're not exactly a Trump fan, but you're not a diehard Democrat either. Correct. So are these guys <laughs> making a good enough case that they can do better than Trump or just that Trump can't do it well at all himself? Yeah, I mean, I think that the problem that the Democrats Party has had from the moment Trump was elected is he's bad at this come to us we're better but that's not going to make anyone feel better I think the other part to look at here is that most of the people who are being severely impacted by corona are over 70 years old those are also voters and so I think that whoever is out there if they can speak to the virus they can speak with compassion and they can say we're you know calm down we've got this under control they are going to win this war of of the words but I mean this virus is is nothing to be politicized. I'm totally against it being politicized. And I think that we need to let our doctors and our researchers kind of take over, whether you're running a presidential campaign or not. You know, taking, speaking of taking the politics out of this, it seems to me, even though I, I have to acknowledge my advice generally, not only is it not requested, it's generally wrong. So I will <laughs> offer it anyway. It seems to me you have Sanders who gets huge crowds, probably the, the hallmark, cornerstone of his uh, campaign. There's Trump who loves a big rally more than anything. And there's there's Biden, who's finally getting crowds that are almost the same size as some of the other players, which he hadn't gotten before. But it seems to me the first one of them that says no more rallies until this is even though it's going to hurt my campaign, it's going to help this country. Talk about a symbol that I think the American people would understand. Is that not a good one? I, I love it, Jim. I mean, I think this is the thing. What the messaging that I'm hearing come out of both Democratic campaigns right now is this, is that we are listening to the local people on the ground. We're listening to the various health 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 authorities, both in the cities and the states and the federal government. And we will act accordingly. But how can you say that when MIT is canceling, is doing online any class over? 
over 150 people. How can you convene a 10,000 person rally and say you're concerned about the well-being of your supporters? Well, I think that's fair, but I do think th th those are personal. Those are decisions that are being made by the or by the by the various institutions. They're can not. Can you imagine Donald Trump? Uh, an advisor walking in and saying, or a campaign advisor and saying, uh, Mr. President, we've got to cancel the rally in Jackson, Mississippi tomorrow. And him saying, you're right, it's good for the American people, even though I'll miss the rally. Well, number one, I don't think Donald Trump has said to any advisor so far that they are right. I think Donald <laughs> Trump knows, so that's number one. And number two, no, he's definitely not going to do that. But I would like for him to maybe put Purell stations, maybe have people spread out a little bit. I mean, there are certain things that maybe he could do where if he's not canceling it, he could be a little bit more thoughtful and pragmatic about it. I just, that's not Trump's style. Jennifer, good to see you. Ambassador as well. Great, Great to, to see you both.